Good morning, gang, and a very happy Wednesday to everybody. Pardon me if I look a little tired. I'm working on two hours sleep when I'm recording this. Don't know how many of you stayed up all night last night, uh, but we did here just out of fear of going to bed thinking one thing and waking up hearing the other. Yep, it's semi-official. Obviously, the votes have not been certified until January 6th. Trump is the president-elect. Thank God. It was funny last night. We did our live stream. A lot of you guys were watching. Some of you, obviously, doing other things. And we went for two hours and 45 minutes or whatever from 8 o'clock till nearly 11 till I was just like, I can't sit in this chair anymore. And we watched paint dry, basically. It was exactly what happened, exactly what happened, or exactly what was expected, I guess, was happening. The states that Trump was supposed to win, he was winning. The states that Harris was supposed to win, she was winning. <clears throat> and we moved down along. And then finally I'm like, okay, knowing that the states had said, it's going to be days until we know the results. We decided to call it a night. But Mrs. P and I decided to stay up and watch. And we kept on watching the returns come in and the percentages of the ballot count go up and up. And it's like, when are they going to call some of these states? I mean, they're 93% in. And all of a sudden, about 1 o'clock in the morning, they called Georgia. Okay, we're close. And I've said for months and months and months and months that if Trump won Georgia and Pennsylvania, it was over. Well, one o'clock in the morning rolls around, they call Georgia, but they haven't called Alaska. And the polls in Alaska just closed at one o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. And we're like, okay, you're going to call Alaska. You're going to, and to this point right now, they still have not called Alaska. Okay, give you this. But not that it's a, a real worry. I mean, Trump's up 15 points with 73% of the vote in. But we're like, all right. Hanging on watching. Pennsylvania's close and Pennsylvania's close. And all of a sudden, ding. And they called Pennsylvania. This is probably somewhere around 1.30-ish, thereabouts. And... I'm like, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. That's it. He won Georgia and Pennsylvania. It's over. But he was only still sitting at 267. But a sense of relief had washed over me. And we're waiting and waiting. At this point, I'm waiting. I want to either see Kamala Harris concede or see Donald Trump declare victory. And of course... The Harris campaign tells everybody at their watch party to go home that Kamala Harris will be addressing the public in the morning. Let's wait till tomorrow and we counting votes overnight. We'll get back to work tomorrow. I'm like, oh, crap. Here we go. What do they know that we don't that three o'clock in the morning? We're going to have ballots come up. But it was starting to also smell a little bit like 2016 where around one o'clock in the morning or so that Hillary Clinton's campaign told everybody to go home, that they'd be back in the morning. One forty-five rolls around and Fox news comes up and says, Donald Trump has now been elected president. He is, we are calling Wisconsin, not Alaska. They called Wisconsin for Trump and that put Trump over the top. Okay. Get, he needed three, they gave him, Wisconsin gave him 10, and Trump was over the top. Thank God, sense of relief. Kamala Harris chickened out like you figured she would, you know. Uh, you know, she must have been really exhausted from running that 70-day campaign. But supposedly, she called Trump to concede, so we don't have to worry about all the 2020 or 2000, we're going to the Supreme Court. We're going to, she got her ass handed to her yesterday. We still don't have a call 
in Michigan, Nevada, Arizona, or Alaska. Trump is probably expected to win them all. It will be a big win. I'm not going to say it's a landslide. Maybe somebody will. But for it to be 312 to 226, that's it's a big win, but that's not a landslide. It was a good night. And I was watching bits and pieces from CNN afterwards because there's nothing I wanted to see more than the liberal meltdown last night. And of course, we got Joy Reid coming out and blaming, you know, it was people voted for her because they were anti-black. You know, she had to come in the racist one. Uh, it didn't matter. They had every excuse in the book. It never was the excuse that she wasn't a good candidate. The answer was it was either racism or or it was sexism, or it wasn't fair to her because she didn't have enough time to let the American public get to know her. I'm thinking to myself, she had four years as vice president. She could have done plenty. Now, kind of hidden in the polls, and this one floored me. CNN was the one that actually came up with this one. Kamala Harris underperformed Joe Biden in 2020, got less votes than Joe Biden did in 2020 in every county in the country. She underperformed everywhere. Now, I want to throw this at you here real quick. The popular vote, right? We hear this. Hillary Clinton, I should have been president. I won the popular vote. I beat Trump. I got three million more votes, right? Remember all this sort of stuff. As of right now, as of this morning, and it's a little after six o'clock here, Donald Trump has 70 million votes. Kamala Harris has 66 million votes. Michigan, 95% of the vote has been counted. Okay. And that's at about eh, 5 million votes, okay? So there's 5% more. So maybe a couple hundred thousand. Nevada, 84% in. There's about a hundred, uh, about 1.2 million, so in there. So there's less than 100,000 there. Arizona, 60% is in, 2.1 million. So okay, maybe there's 2 million more votes, Alaska, 73% is in with all 220,000 votes. There's maybe 20,000 or something, 30,000, 30, let's say. And everybody, media, people, social media, wherever, the lines yesterday were utterly insane. The early voting turnout was record, right? We kept hearing this all over the place. Let's say there's still 5 million vote, votes to count. And let's just, for the sake of math, just to make this easy, let's just say Trump got them all. That would give Trump about 76 million votes to Kamala Harris's 66 million votes. Okay, somebody want to convince me again, or at least try, that Joe got 81 million votes last time? When we had supposed lower turnout last time, okay, the polls weren't as busy. Trump got 73,000 votes or whatever. He's going to, or 73 million. He's going to come in right about the same place he came in 2020. About 73 million votes. Kamala Harris if she gets 3 million of these, going to have about 69 million. What happened to these other 12 million people that apparently voted in 2020 and didn't vote in 2024? I'm sorry. If anything proved that Joe Biden never got 81 million votes, yesterday did. I just want you to remember that. Stop the steal. This time they managed. This time the Republican Party was ready for it. And this time, every time the 
Democrats tried to pull something hinky, the GOP was there to cut them off at the pass. It's a good thing. But of course, like we said, yesterday wasn't only about the presidential race. You need a lot of other things to go on. And I'm not going to get into all the state races or stuff like that. We already know this is a good thing. The Republicans control the Senate. They flipped West Virginia. Joe Manchin uh, retired. And Jim Justice is the new senator from West Virginia. <clears throat> they flipped Ohio. That Sherrod Brown, who's been there forever, who is just a useless senator, always has been, lost to Bernie Moreno. That was good. Ted Cruz kept his seat. Every every incumbent kept their seat, even some of the uh, very close races that they weren't sure, sure about. The Republicans didn't lose any. This is where it gets interesting. Dave McCormick in Pennsylvania leads Bob Casey. That would be another pickup. Mike Rogers in Michigan leads Alyssa Slotkin. That would be another pickup. Uh, Eric Hovde in Wisconsin leads Tammy Baldwin. Oh, actually, nope, I take it back. That one is just recently flipped. Tammy Baldwin may keep it. It's 98% in, and she's up by a third of a point. Not two-thirds of a point. Nevada is the downside. That one looks like Jackie Rosen is going to keep her seat. Or no, I take it back. Flip that one. I got wrong again. Uh, Nevada, Jackie Rosen is going to lose, and Sam Brown is leading. That's a good thing. Montana, this one's, I can't believe they haven't called this one. This one's a blowout. Tim Sheehy is going to beat John Tester. He's up by nearly 40,000 votes, you know, or some 7.5%. They still haven't called it. The down, the loser looks like Carrie Lake's going to lose again. She's down by about two and a half points to Ruben Gallego. The thing is this with Carrie Lake losing. Remember, Carrie Lake lost to Katie Hobbs for Arizona's governorship. And now she's lost to Ruben Gallego, or soon to be, to be senator. I'm betting you're going to see Carrie Lake somewhere in the Trump administration. I got a real good idea for a place for her. Why don't you make her the press secretary? After all, she was a news broadcaster for two decades in Arizona. Okay? And when somebody says, oh, after being running for governor, running for senator, why would she take that position? I don't know. It seemed to work out pretty good for Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Hmm? She's now governor of Arkansas. Of course, we didn't have it all wine and roses yesterday. Adam Schiff is one over Steve Garvey for California's open Senate seat that was vacated when Dianne Feinstein died. So that means now we got Schiff for brains in the uh, Senate instead of the House. The Republicans lost the... Uh, North Carolina governor's seat. I believe it was North Carolina versus Virginia. Uh, there's North Carolina. Okay, I'm sorry. It's early. <laughs> trying to keep this going on. But all in all, it was a very good night for the GOP. It was a very good night for Trump. We don't know about the House yet. There, is, there I mean, again, you've got 438 House members running. And there's still, geez, what, uh, 70, 70 races that haven't been called yet. So that one's going to be a while. It's going to be interesting to see if Trump gets a mandate, if the GOP can hold the House. They've taken the Senate, obviously taken the White House. 
and he did it by winning the popular vote. That's only the second time that's happened in the 21st century that the GOP's won the popular vote. Just give you that as a thought. So he's got a mandate. Now, as long as he doesn't do something stupid like Joe Biden going, oh, I've got a mandate, I can rule with an iron fist, I can do whatever I want, and look what you know the results of that were. Your party just got shellacked in the elections. Trump's got a lot of work to do. Congress has a lot of work to do to fix all the problems that we had. Where does that leave us? Today we're going to be celebrating. Not by burning cars or looting Nike stores, but if you've never watched The View, this today might be a good day to watch it. Today would be a good day to turn on CNN or MSNBC. Just so you can bask in some liberal tears for a change. After being called deplorable, irredeemable, Nazi, fascist, garbage, deplorable, whatever, trash. Today's our chance to sit back and smile and just go, don't care what you think. And more people are with me than are with you. Today would be the fun day to watch all the people in neighborhoods sneak out of their house and pull their Harris Walls sign out of the yard. Today would be a good day to, I don't know, buy stock in U-Haul. Because <laughs> Kamala, you're moving out. Uh... It's going to be an interesting morning to see what happens. The media is already coming up with every excuse. It's going to be interesting to watch Kamala Harris explain why she lost. And if she's going to be a gracious loser, or if she's going to be the Kamala Harris that everybody claims that is a shrew, you know, 92% of her staff can't last a year, and gets out there and starts blaming everybody else for why she lost instead of looking in the mirror and saying, you know, maybe I am really unlikable, unintelligent, had no plan. Gee, I guess I can't sleep my way to the top. Got close, but not all the way. I like to enjoy the joke they made, you know, that every time they say Trump hates women, like, yeah, he keeps holding them back from getting a promotion. It's the second time he's kept a woman from becoming president. That I got a problem with a woman as a president. I just didn't want either one of those two. Enjoy it today while you can. <clears throat> But there isn't a magic wand to make this country all that better. You know that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are going to throw every poison pill they can. That Congress is going to do whatever they can, at least the Senate, while they have it, to make Trump's next term a living nightmare. He knows it, too. Okay. They're going to try to push through all sorts of crazy stuff. They're going to, for example, let's take gas prices. Gas prices have been down for a couple of months, right? Don't expect that to last. There's no reason anymore for Biden and Harris to artificially deflate gas prices, you know, drain the strategic petroleum reserve. They'll just let the prices go back up. This will be their their way of punishing all of us for not electing Kamala Harris. You look at prepping. Maybe we don't have as much of a worry. We don't have an incoming president <clears throat> who's hell-bent on going to war, Okay, who's not going to try to start World War III, who doesn't want to send your kids to Ukraine or the Middle East. You know, we don't have a president who's 
or president-elect at least, who doesn't care about food prices or whatever, maybe we get a little bit of a break. We're now, we now have a president-elect to the rest of the world Fear respects, it's a good thing. Now we get to see how much of this chaos can get fixed. Maybe we can take our foot off the gas a little bit with our prepping. But it still doesn't mean we can sit back and do nothing. China's not going to be happy about tariffs, I'm going to tell you that. Taiwan is still an issue. Iran isn't all of a sudden going to go, oh, okay, you know what, we'll be friends with the U.S. Terrorist groups really don't care. We still have our damage, or, you know, our potential damage that can be done. Not so much by our government, hopefully that gets fixed somewhat. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to keep doing what I'm gonna, I do. Keep prepping, I'll keep being here. It's going to be different, sure. There's not a senile old man to kick around all day long every time a video comes on. That still doesn't mean there aren't a whole bunch of people in Washington that hate this country. Hell, Adam Schiff got promoted for doing it. Okay. If the Democrats do stuff to threaten us, Believe me, I'll be calling it out. If Trump does something stupid, believe me, I'll call it out. I support Trump because I like his policies. But if he's got bad ones, I'm not going to be, oh, well, it's Donald Trump, so it must be good. No, sorry. I'm not a Democrat. I'm an intelligent voter. I'm an informed voter. I don't vote for people just because of the letter next to their name. They couldn't have run a ham sandwich yesterday on the Republican ticket. I wouldn't have voted for it. Probably would have voted Libertarian or something because it wasn't going to be for Kamala Harris because that is a ham sandwich. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep moving forward. We've got a break. If you've just started prepping here in the last couple of years, breathe a sigh of relief. You just got a little bit of extra time before this happen, before anything crazy happens. But I will tell you this, irregardless of who's in the White House, who's controlling Congress, whatever, there is going to be an SHTF event ahead of us. Maybe it's political, maybe it's meteorological, maybe it's personal, okay? I think you all can agree that the people who went through Hurricane Helene or Hurricane Milton, that was an SHTF event. There's a whole lot of people that have lost jobs in the last four years. I mean, all those jobs Biden created, yeah. They haven't been in the private sector. We have less less Americans working today than we had on January 20th, 2021. A government job, maybe, but I get the feeling that government jobs are going to be cut a little bit. So we don't need 87,000 IRS agents. 87,000 Border Patrol agents, that might be an idea. Okay. Keep doing what you're doing. You might have got a little bit of a reprieve, a little bit of breather here. But job loss, hurricane, like the one that's expected to hit the Gulf Coast here sometime this week. Uh, yeah, they're coming. Keep doing what you're doing. We get a little day here to celebrate. Hopefully, we don't see cities burn. Haven't heard anything crazy yet, but I just got up on two hours sleep. We did it, guys. We swamped the vote. We saved our country. Communism was kicked in the nuts yesterday. Once we get rid of it forever, then things will be okay. But until then, it's still peeking around the corner, trying to find its way in. It's up to us. Yesterday, 
we saved the United States. Have a great day. Pinball out.